Welcome to Let the Quran Speak. I'm Aisha, your host. This week in our series on Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, we explore an often misunderstood aspect of his life, his marriages. Over the course of his life, the Prophet had 11 wives. This has led some to question his character. Let's sit down with Dr. Shabir Ali to learn more. Welcome to the show, Dr. Shabir. Pleasure to be on. So can you tell us a little bit, let's start with the first marriage of the Prophet to Khadija. Can you tell us a little bit more about that? Yes, yeah, so the Prophet, peace be upon him, was 25 years old when he got married for the first time, according to the tra traditional biographies. And um, uh, in, in, the, in the early part of his life, up to, uh, to 25 years old, uh, no one can point to any um, deficiency in his character uh, and his uh, behavior. Some, whereas, of course, we know that sometimes young people uh, get implicated in, in, in terms of fooling around and uh, uh, unchaste uh, behavior. But the Prophet, peace be upon him, remained morally upright. Um, and then he got married for the first time to Khadija. It is said that uh, Khadija was uh, older than the Prophet, peace be upon him. And, and that, uh, in a way, shows that the Prophet was not uh, um, out uh, looking only for uh, youthfulness and, and charm in that physical sense, but um, not to say that uh, Khadija lacked any of this, but uh, the, the um, biographies show that Khadija was known to be a Tahir and Afifa, uh, Arabic words which denote uh, that she was a pure and uh, morally upright uh, person, and, and that is uh, how the Prophet, peace be upon him, um, made his choice uh, of marriage partner. And she was also a businesswoman, right? Yeah, she was a businesswoman, and it said that the Prophet, peace be upon him, was um, uh, conducting business on her behalf, uh, and um, she, the, the trading was successful. Um, that uh, left the precedent in Islamic thinking that uh, it, it's not wrong for a, a man to be employed by a woman, and a woman could actually own business and conduct uh, her affairs on her own. So what happened after she passed away is that and then the Prophet married more women? Yes, uh, the Prophet, peace be upon him, uh, lived with her for the remainder of her life, uh, and uh, he, she being her uh, his only wife during this period. And when she passed away, the Prophet, peace be upon him, was uh, uh, about 50 years old. So that means 25 years of marriage, and the Prophet, peace be upon him, remained uh, monogamous. Um, after her death, uh, the, it, it was suggested that the Prophet, peace be upon him, should get married again. And, um, and one reason for this suggestion is that the Prophet, peace be upon him, had um, um, uh, young daughters. And uh, obviously it would have been a good idea to have a mother figure in the house uh, to especially take care of these uh, young daughters of the Prophet, peace be upon him. So after the death of Khadija, how many more uh, wives did the Prophet take on? Because we know that he had 11 wives over the course of his uh, lifetime. Yes, uh, and uh, Khadija obviously passed away, so that leaves 10. And in the meantime, um, during the Prophet's life, uh, another one of his wives uh, died. So he had, uh, a, 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 at most, nine wives altogether at, uh, at one time. Mm, the, uh, this has to be understood in the context of the social situation in which he lived. Uh, an important point here is to recognize that uh, m figures of old, uh, major prophets of God, uh, who Muslims uh, look up to and, uh, and recognize as uh, holy or, or righteous men, um, had multiple wives. Uh, and I mean we need to explore all of the situations that um, justify that sort of um, um, form of marriage. So during that time, was this a common practice? Yes, uh, many reports show that um, the people at the time um, Men at the time had, had many wives. Uh, in, in ancient history, it is known that uh, Abraham had um, at least uh, two wives because he was married to Sarah. And then when he went to Egypt, uh, he was given Hagar as a concubine. Well, well Sarah was given Hagar, and then Hagar gave, uh, uh, Hagar was eventually given by Sarah uh, to Abraham to be his concubine, which in this, uh, uh, one way of being his wife at that time. And later on, it is said that he married Keturah. Uh, on one interpretation, this would be a third wife. Um, it is noted that David, who Muslims believe to be a prophet of God, uh, had uh, many wives. Uh, the Islamic tradition says uh, 99 wives. And um, uh, it is noted that uh, Sulaiman, uh, known in the Bible as Solomon, 
uh, had uh, many wives as well. The Bible says uh, 700 wives and 300 concubines. Uh, the, the number obviously se uh, seems to be exaggerated and it's hard to imagine a man... Uh, Having 700 wives? Yes, uh, but uh, at, at the same time it is known that in ancient societies um, uh, tribes uh, uh, were the, the, the building blocks or, or a tribe was a unit that, that was strong and fortified itself. And how do tribes get formed? Uh, usually by uh, having many people related to each other in a clan and then that uh, a more expansive clan would become a, a tribe. Uh, so th how is this formed again by all of these uh, blood uh, relatives being linked to each other? Now, uh, a woman obviously gets one child at a time, unless there is a, uh, a twin or, or triplet birth. Uh, but, but a man could father many uh, children at once by having many wives. And so the family relations are, are built through this uh, uh, polygamous marriage where a man has many wives. So this explains the ancient practice. Now uh, when it comes to the uh, marriages of the Prophet peace be upon him more specifically, historians of religion uh, have commented on this and said that the Prophet peace be upon him married largely for political and social reasons. Can you shed light onto some of these marriages that he had for these reasons? Yes, uh, and I'd also like to name the, the historians. Uh, as an example, I can say uh, Karen Armstrong uh, in his uh, in her book uh, Muhammad, Life of the uh, of a biography of the Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him, and uh, uh, another uh, book, Islam: The Straight Path, by John Esposito, who. who um, he, he remains a Christian, uh, but he's involved in Muslim-Christian dialogue and has written many books on, on the subject. Uh, so now, uh, looking specifically at what uh, they are pointing to when they say that the Prophet, peace be upon him, married for political and social motives, we can see that in one marriage after another, uh, th th this plays out. For example, uh, the Prophet, peace be upon him, married the daughters of two of his closest companions who had uh, uh, devoted much to the uh, establishment and spread of Islam. Abu Bakr on the one hand, Omar on the other hand. So the Prophet peace be upon him married the daughter of Abu Bakr, that was Aisha, and the daughter of Omar, that was Hafsa. Um, so this is kind of a political reason because uh, from the historian's point of view, the Prophet peace be upon him here is cementing relationships with those who are most dedicated to, to the cause. Uh, the Prophet, peace be upon him, similarly married Jawairiya, who was the daughter of the Banu Mustalik chief. Banu Mustalik were a people who were at war with the Muslims, and when they were defeated, their people were taken captive, but uh, the Prophet, peace be upon him, offered to marry Jawairiya, and uh, when he did, the, the Muslims released all of the captives from Jawairiya's people because they felt that now uh, Jawairiya is a relative of ours and, and her relatives should not be uh, kept as prisoners of war. So you can see the, the political connection here that the Prophet, peace be upon him, is uh, uh, bringing peoples together, even uh, people who was, uh, who was at war with, with the Prophet, peace be upon him, the, the pr now I is becoming a relative and, and, and on good terms. In a similar way, the Prophet, peace be upon him, uh, married uh, Sophia, who was uh, a, a daughter of a Jewish chief. Um, and, and this would uh, allow for Muslims to think of one of the mothers of the believer because this is the, uh, what, how the, Muslim, uh, the Muslims view the wives of the Prophet, peace be upon him, as a mother of the believers. Um, so Safiya now being a mother of the believers and, and being the daughter of a Jew Jewish chief, uh, that uh, in, in Muslim thinking brings uh, communities closer to each other because we can ex respect a person who comes from a Jewish uh, background. She's now uh, mother of the believers. The Prophet, peace be upon him, likewise uh, married uh, Umm Habiba, um, who was the daughter of Abu Sufyan. She was the chief of the, the uh, he was a Meccan chief and uh, uh, very opposed to Islam and to the Prophet, peace be upon him. Uh, but uh, through the Prophet's marriage to Umm Habiba, um, that softened the, uh, the opposition of Abu Sufyan and made it possible for the Prophet, peace be upon him, to march back into Mecca and to take over the city without bloodshed because uh, now what could not be accomplished by the sword is now accomplished here with love. And, um, and this is a different way of, uh, of, of reaching peace and, and building alliances and cementing relationships uh, between people. So that accounts largely for the 
uh, political aspect of uh, the Prophet's marriages. Did his wives play a role on a personal level in terms of helping the Prophet um, preach the mission of Islam? Yes, uh, uh, Khadija was very helpful to the Prophet, peace be upon him, especially in the uh, early years when the Prophet had started to get the revelation and he himself was confused, not knowing what to do with this. It's a very strange and new experience, uh, but Khadija reassured him um, and, and believed in him, which is a little bit uh, unusual because sometimes wives are critical of their, mm -hmm. <laughs> of their husbands. Um, the, uh, the Prophet, peace be upon him, also received the sage advice uh, from Umm Salma, one of his wives, when he uh, was uh, uh, stopped from making the pilgrimage to Mecca. The enemy prevented the Muslims from entering the city. And um, uh, this was uh, unjust because it was um, it, they were going for peaceful purposes uh, for just to worship God at the sacred uh, house of worship. The Muslims were confused. What are we to do in this situation? And then Umm Salma offered the sage advice of the Prophet, peace be upon him, that he should start offering his sacrifice at that location, though it's not the usual location for the sacrifice, but seeing that they are prevented from entering this, the, the city to go to the sacred precincts, um, he should do it right then and there. And when he did that, then the Muslims, uh, it is reported, followed suit and, and they did the same and calm was restored. Uh, to the agitated uh, Muslim uh, group. And just as we wrap up, do we know what happened after the death of the Prophet? Did his wives continue to play an active role in the community? Yes, um, some of them did. Uh, Aisha uh, ranks uh, above all else in, in this regard in that uh, she's known to be very active uh, both in teaching uh, the uh, religion of Islam to those who wanted to know. And uh, this was probably helped by the fact that she was young when she got married to the Prophet, peace be upon him, so perhaps her ability to learn and retain uh, the knowledge that the Prophet left behind uh, was, um, um, uh, was acute, and she was then able to uh, transmit that information to um, later and generations of, of Muslims. Uh, she was also politically active, we, we know, uh, in, in trying her best to uh, giving her, her own interpretation to set things right. Thank you very much, Dr. Shabir. You're welcome.